Yes. To be, not to be. I never knew anybody that lived in San Pedro. One of the things that struck me, obviously, when I first came here was the two trees and the point, and definitely a type of wonderful solitude that you would never expect to find in the boundaries of L.A. It's the end down here, I and mean, it's very, very quiet. It can be very, very peaceful, and then at certain times, the peaceful can be scary. You know, because we have so many different things that go on here from anything from the beautiful side to the dark side. How many suicides do you think have been on the cliffs? Oh, Lord. Sad. Um, I, you know, the summer is probably the worst time. In the summer, I think we had at least one every two weeks. I think on certain days like this, solitude is it's just peaceful. And that's, that's when you look at it in a different way. It's like how pretty it is and how calm it is and how grateful we are that we have this, you know? But then there's the part in the park that you do see. You see at about five o'clock, all the people that come down here and, and bring their sleeping bags and stuff because they don't have anywhere to go. So at the nighttime, it's a whole different scenario that you see. And then they all come down and the park gets full and a lot of those people come down here because they have nowhere to go and this is their spot to come. And like I said, sometimes they, they're so depressed they end it and sometimes they're okay and they just come here and sit for a while and some of them just need someone to talk to. One of the things of this art project I do has to do with being there for the day a person might kill themselves. But instead, they're coming to the art project, they're working on their art, Everybody's been homeless, it's in it, at one time or another. <clears throat> Most of them, when they started with the project, were homeless. Uh, a lot of them, you know, live with different types of consciousness, like mental diagnoses, and meaning those are just human words, but it just simply means that they're demons that they fight with or right. are severe. And one thing that people don't understand is that the the community that developed in Skid Row is actually a very rich community. The people were pushed to Skid Row from everywhere. They were herded there because it was an absolutely undesired area uh, residentially. No one wanted to live there. You had the fish canning and packing. The smells were unbelievable and the poultry packing. So it was very similar to moving the Native Americans from one reservation to another and then discovering oil on it and then moving them again. Uh, the oil that was discovered in Skid Row was the sudden uh, real estate potential. There was a tremendous amount of communing going on between those people. It is a, it's a community. People help each other. Uh, people care for each other. They create music together. Uh, they endure hardship together. Well, it's like the migrant workers of the Dust Bowl era, like the Great Depression, uh, Hitler's Final solution to put the Jews and the gypsies and people with schizophrenia and homosexuals and people born with physical conditions of difference, like dwarf or Down syndrome. And, and what happened in Skid Row, not only with the forcing the people there and then this creation of an amazing culture that they did, despite the huge hardship, and then, but then to come and take it away, it takes its place along with some of our worst, most atrocious decisions as an atrocity in the history of definitely the United States of America. They, they, at one point they got it where they would allow them to pitch their tents between, I don't know, 10 p.m. at night and 6 a.m. in the morning. And then they had to move their tents or else they were subject to arrest. It is illegal to sit, stand, or lie down on any sidewalk or public thoroughfare. How, how, how could we all go along with that? And yet we all went along with it. There was very little protest in a certain sense. They took away all the bathrooms. There used to be quite a bit more bathrooms, plastic outhouse things, and they took them all away, giving the people no place to go to the bathroom. They took away all the drinking fountains. There's no drinking fountains or way to get water to drink in all of Skid Row. A huge percentage of the homeless in Skid Row ha came from state hospitals 
have serious disabling mental illness. Those people took no drugs at all. They, they were drug naive. They never took street drugs. They had no exposure to it. But because we dumped them into Skid Row, and then we dumped people coming out of prisons and corrections into Skid Row, whose only livelihood they had was selling drugs. People from the mental hospitals, they have schizophrenia, they're in a lot of distress, and suddenly somebody allows them to try some crack or something, and they immediately feel great. Yes, I'm happy to be alive, but my spirit, it cries. You see, because I can no longer deny. By doing so, I am living a lie. Is the sum of our pain too much for us to gain, even sustain in this life's game? Yeah, some say, don't get that education. We live in a free nation. Make your own creation. <laughs> <laughs>